In the yesteryears of centuries ago, in a small portion of this vast world of ours, there lived a people called the Children of Israel. From them came certain men and women through whom God revealed himself to all mankind. One of these was Elijah, a fearless prophet. Almost 3,000 years ago, a great prophet came from the wild and mountainous region of Gilead. His name was Elijah, a man who had dedicated his life to God. And now God was sending him to the king of Israel. In those days, King Ahab ruled over Israel, and Queen Jezebel ruled over Ahab. It was she who built altars for the worship of Baal, the heathen god. And because the people worshipped idols, a famine was to come upon the land. As the Lord God of Israel lives, whom I serve, there will be no dew nor rain these coming years until I say so. Then the Lord spoke to Elijah, saying, Go away from here and hide by the brook Kirith. You will drink from the brook, and I have ordered ravens to feed you there. And so, obeying the Lord, Elijah hurried away from the palace. And Elijah lived in the wilderness and drank from the brook Kirith. And the ravens brought him bread and meat every morning and every evening. In this way, God provided food for him. But after some time, the brook dried up because there was no rain. Then the Lord spoke to Elijah again, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, and stay there. I have told a widow who lives there to give you food. When Elijah came to the gate of the city, he saw a widow and her boy gathering sticks, and he greeted them. Please bring me a little water to drink. And also a bit of bread. As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked. All I have is a handful of flour and a little olive oil. I'm gathering a few sticks, and I'm going to prepare something for myself and my boy. After that is gone, we'll probably die of hunger. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Go and do as you have said. But first, make me a little cake and bring it to me. And then make something for yourself and your son. The Lord, the God of Israel, says the jar of flour will never be used up and the bottle of oil will never become empty until the day the Lord sends rain. Obediently, the widow did what Elijah told her. And she, her son, and the prophet ate for many days. And just as God had promised, there was always flour in the jar and oil in the bottle. So Elijah stayed at the widow's home in an upper room. But one day, the woman's, woman's son became sick and died. <laughs> Oh, 
leave me alone, man of God. Did you come to remind me of my sins and to kill my child? <laughs> Give me your son. <laughs> Then Elijah carried the boy into the upper room where he was staying and laid him down on his bed. And when they were alone, he prayed to the Lord. Oh, Lord, my God, make this child alive again. Son is alive. One day, Elijah sent a messenger to King Ahab telling him that he wanted to speak to him. Are you the one that's making trouble for Israel? I haven't troubled Israel. But you and your family have, because you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord and have worshipped Baal. Now, therefore, send men to bring all Israel to Mount Carmel and also the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's table. <laughs> So all the people and the priests of Baal gathered on Mount Carmel, and they waited to see what Elijah would do. How long will you go on limping between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. Give us two bulls, and let the prophets of Baal Choose one bull for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on the wood, but put no fire under it. I'll prepare the other one and put it on the wood and put no fire under it. You call on the name of your God and I will call on the name of the Lord and the God who answers by fire, he is God. First, the priests of Baal offered a sacrifice on their altar. And they called on the name of Baal from morning until noon. But there was no answer of any kind. No fire came to the altar. Then Elijah began to mock them. Cry louder, he's your God. And either he's lost in thought or on a long journey. Or maybe he's asleep and needs to be awakened. So the priests of Baal called louder and raved on into the afternoon, but still there was no answer. Then Elijah repaired the altar of the Lord that had been torn down. He took 12 stones, one for each of the tribes of Israel, and rebuilt the altar. And he made a trench around it, and arranged the wood and cut up the other bull, and laid it on the wood. Fill buckets with water, and pour it on the sacrifice, and on the wood.
Do it a second time. And a third. of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and that I am your servant, and that you told me to do all that I have done. Answer me, O Lord. Answer me, so that these people may know that you, O Lord, are God. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the offering, the wood, the stones, and the dust. It even licked up the water that was in the trench. Then the people believed in the Lord. Seize the prophets of Baal. Do not let any one of them escape. Go back to your palace, King Ahab, for soon there will be a heavy rain. But when Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and how he had put to death all the prophets of Baal, the queen cried out in anger. May the gods punish me if I don't put Elijah to death by this time tomorrow! To save his life, Elijah fled into the wilderness, where he asked that he might die. But an angel of the Lord came and fed and comforted him. At last, Elijah came to Mount Sinai, where God had spoken to Moses hundreds of years before. As Elijah sat in a cave on the mount, a strong wind swept the mountaintop, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind came an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came the sound of a gentle blowing. What are you doing here, Elijah? I have been fighting for you, O Lord God of hosts, because the people have forsaken your covenant. They have thrown down your altars. They have killed your prophets. Now I am the only one left, and they're trying to take my life. Then God assured Elijah that he was mistaken, that there were still 7,000 in Israel who had not bowed down to Baal. He also showed Elijah that his work would continue. Elijah was soon to anoint another prophet to carry on his work. So with renewed faith and courage, Elijah left Mount Sinai to continue his work. Later, as Elijah passed a field where a young man was plowing, a man by the name of Elisha, he put his mantle on Elisha as a sign that God had chosen him to be the next great prophet of Israel. And Elisha left everything and followed and served him. But one day, Elijah knew the time had come for him to leave Elisha. He had faithfully done God's work on earth and was about to be taken up into heaven. First, however, he offered to do one more thing for his disciple. 
Before I'm taken away, tell me, Elisha, what would you like to have me do for you? Please let me have a, a double share of your spirit. You've asked a hard thing. But if you see me as I'm taken from you, you receive what you've asked for. Elisha saw fiery chariots and fiery horses which came between him and Elijah. And Elijah was carried to heaven in a whirlwind. Then Elijah took up Elijah's mantle which had fallen to the ground and he went forth to do the Lord's work. For he knew that from this day on the spirit of the Lord would be with him as it had been with Elijah. Elijah. 